There are several dangerous aspects to a post-disaster open fire or even a fire in the wild. High winds can make your fire difficult to light, and sparks can cause your fire to grow and potentially become out of control. Smoke and radiating light from the flames can announce to all the location of your encampment and attract undesirable people that could threaten your safety. Still, having a safe fire after a disaster could mean the difference between life and death for you. Fire is a prepper's essential tool, and it's key to survival. Fortunately, the ancient indigenous people of North America developed a method to deal with all of these issues, and we're going to follow their model in this video and build what is commonly called a Dakota fire pit or a Dakota fire hole. In this video, I will explain how to build a basic Dakota fire pit, why it's far superior to an open campfire, and why it was probably developed in the first place. Let's break some ground. Please consider subscribing to our newsletter by clicking on the link in the description and comment section below. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and click the like button to help the channel grow. How to build it. The Dakota fire pit is essentially just two holes in the ground that connect up. Your slightly larger fire hole is fed by the smaller hole that should be at least as big around as your fist and will open up at the bottom of your larger fire pit hole. Having a steep sided, narrow and deep fire hole will protect your fire from high winds, which will help you get it started under challenging conditions. The sides of the fire pit will also focus the heat energy upwards and not in all directions like a campfire. This will allow you to generate a concentrated heat sufficient enough to boil water or cook in a very short amount of time. My Dakota fire pit will be a permanent fixture in my backyard. That's the only way I could sell it to the wife for one, and second, I plan on using it after any disaster where my usual means of cooking are offline. I start by laying out the bricks I want at the base of the fire pit chamber. You don't need to do this or worry about rocks in your pit. I'm only doing this to provide an excellent foundation for my permanent pit. With the bricks laid out, I use a shovel to outline the hole. After this, I remove the ring of bricks and proceed to dig the main pit. As mine will be a permanent fixture, I'm going to go big, so I want my main hole to be at the depth of almost two feet and about two inches across. I will end up stacking three layers of stone around the ring, so this will give me added depth. My finish hole with that ring will be almost three feet deep and a width of about 20 inches. Because I'm not a true two to one ratio, I will probably get a little smoke. Your ratio should be around twice as deep as your hole is wide, but it must be 16 inches deep at minimum. You always want the hole deeper than it is wide. This will concentrate the heat upwards and will allow you to contain the flames within the hole. So I dig and dig, break rocks and dig. Your smaller Dakota fire pit can be dug by hand or even with a small shovel. Your soil may not be as compacted and hard. You don't want your pit collapsing in on itself. So really the only caveat is not to build it in the sand. And you can use the dirt you remove to build up a rim around your main fire hole. Or you can use it to build a trough and channel the breeze or wind into your air intake hole. I use a variety of tools to try and make the job easier. Again, you'll probably want to go smaller to make your pit. Next, you want to dig your air intake hole upwind from your larger fire hole. I don't have much of a breeze because of my fences, so I'm just going to dig the vent hole a little bit away from the main hole. Your air intake hole will be at a 45 degree angle to your larger hole. For mine, I will go straight down and then curve it to that angle after about a foot down. When I felt like I was close to connecting, I started digging out from the base of the fire pit. I used a little water in the air intake hole to soften the soil so I would know when the two holes connected. Now you don't want to do this if you plan on using your Dakota fire pit the same day you're constructing it, as the water will create more smoke and make lighting your fire more difficult. In my case, the water allowed me to smooth and mold the sides. Then I placed my ring of bricks in the base and the brick above the intake hole to allow air to flow. You'll want to put rocks around the ring of your pit if you're going to cook over it, as these rocks will create a base for your pan to rest upon. Lacking any cookware or rocks, you can crisscross green wood over a lower fire to create a makeshift grill. I paste some flat paving stones at the bottom to provide a good surface for the fire when dry and then ring the hole with my angle flagstone retaining wall blocks. If I find my fire hole isn't deep enough, I can do several layers of these stones to chimney it up. You can accomplish the same thing for your pit by using the dirt you remove from it to chimney up the sides. For the air intake hole, I ringed it with some stone only for the sake of appearance. It isn't necessary and will actually work better for you when the low air is unencumbered. I then stacked a second layer of stones on the top of my main ring. This will support a fire screen to arrest sparks and later a grill. 
Since my pit is a permanent fixture, I finished it by laying pebble rocks around the rings. When it is finished, I just needed to let it dry out because of the water I use, and then I could light in it. To light it, I threw in some paper and went with the standard TP structure for staking the wood. There was some regular smoke because of the paper, the wetness of the wood, and because the pit was still considerably damp. That did subside once the heat was sufficient. When the fire was low, I used a leaf blower on the intake hole, and you can see how efficiently it stoked the fire without blowing reckless sparks and embers everywhere. In a survival situation with a narrower, more concentrated fire hole, you could easily use this design to create a makeshift kiln or forge. Benefits of a Dakota fire pit versus an open fire. The indigenous people of the high Great Plains face high winds on grassy plains. These people, largely nomadic, follow the bison. They couldn't risk an out of control prairie fire, nor did they want to signal any enemies of their presence on the low flatlands. An open campfire, it just simply wasn't practical, and the high winds made even lighting one problematic. It is thought that out of this necessity, the Dakota fire pit was created. I already mentioned some of the benefits of the fire pit, but here they are again, plus a few more. First, the oxygen feeding in at the lowest point on the fire through the smaller hole and circulating around the base of the fire discourages smoke. The fire burns hotter as a result. The larger fire chamber, technically called a pyrolysis chamber, has enough of a rise to focus the heat towards the center and up like a rocket stove. The high heat reduces the sloppy chemical transition of the biomass to complete combustion. In layman's terms, the more efficient the biomass conversion to flame, the less likely smoke will be generated and the more heat and light energy created. A typical campfire loses much of its heat out of the sides. A Dakota fire hole focuses the heat up the fire hole. This allows you to use a minimal amount of material, but creates a fast and very concentrated heat like a rocket stove. Your Dakota fire pit can be much smaller and probably will be if you're not in a more permanent location. A smaller size will allow you to use simple kindling like twigs to generate enough heat to boil water, stay warm, or cook. If your fire is burning slowly or having difficulty with the materials you are burning, you have to get low and blow into the sides of a campfire. It's not the most efficient method. Even with my larger size fire hole, I found that blowing down the air intake hole concentrated the air and stoked the coals at the base. I also used a leaf blower on it and had my fire burning like a jet engine. When your fire is done, instead of leaving a pile of smoldering ash, you can fill the hole in with dirt you removed and leave no trace or evidence that you were ever there. You don't risk embers reigniting in the wind, and you cover your tracks and maintain your operational security better. When you want an efficient low smoke fire after a disaster or on your next campout or wilderness trek, the Dakota Fire Pit is definitely the way to go. Hopefully this video has provided enough information to get you started. If you've ever built one of these or you plan to, let me know how it went in the comments below. I read many of the comments and I respond to them when I can. That's typically within the first hour of releasing a video. I can notify you when other videos become available if you take that step to subscribe to the channel by clicking the button below. It's a little thing, but it helps us grow our community. As always, stay safe out there.